Okay. How long have you been with Knight? Huh? How long have you been with Knight? Um, it'll be two years next month. Oh, right on. First time you've been in a truck? No. My ex used to drive trucks. Oh, okay. And he used to work for Knight. Oh, really? And that's how I kind of ended up here. I think. <laughs> kind of, sort of. How long have you been with Knight? A year and four months, actually yesterday, was my year and four months. Happy anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> Thank did you go through our school? Did you go through school somewhere else? I did go through Squire, yes. What? What made you pick night? Um, a lot of researching. I really highly recommend it from a lot of people to come tonight, and I was like, well, let me check it out. And I actually called a recruiter and <laughs> talked to Summer. Summer, okay. And Summer, um, she bent over backwards to do everything she could to get me in here, and she did an awesome job, and here I am. So what was school like? Did you enjoy it, or was it boring? I enjoyed it. I loved it. I've always loved trucks, mechanics, everything, and, and it was a little warm. I went during the summertime. Oh, out here? Out here, Ouch. yes. <laughs> so, uh, besides that, I was really knowledgeable. Everything was good. The instructors were awesome. And uh, I learned a lot. What made you get into trucking? Um, to do something I love, you know, and that goes back on I've always loved cars and mechanics and being on the road and, and how do you say, uh, vacationing in all different places. <laughs> and what's better to do it in here, you know? Yeah. You not only get to, this is my office, is looking out these windows, I get to, in a sense, vacation and get paid for it. So uh, I just kind of put them all together. I wanted a career and I knew I had to work hard for it. They weren't just going to hand you a CDL on a truck. Were a mechanic before? Or? No, no, no. My father was a mechanic and uh, he retired, but growing up with him, you know, working in the shops, my first job when I was 16 years old was actually busting out tires, diesel tires, like changing them out. Um, so that was my first job out in Vegas. So I learned mechanics from him and started building cars and building trucks and. So did he just wave at you because you stopped all the way back here? Right. This corner, we can't make it with these big trailers. You need at least two lanes to turn into. Uh, so as you saw, he came into our lane. Right. Now, if I was stuck up here at the, the stop uh, line, he either would have had a waited or I would hope he wouldn't try because you see that pole right there has been hit numerous times. Yeah. So um, I actually learned this through Squire is they have, you know, we park back here so other trucks can get through. Just being courteous to other drivers. Yeah, I was wondering why we were so far back for a moment. Yeah. Yeah, those trailers are long, so. So did you crash? Did you hit anything when you were training? No, I was real close. My second day, though, I remember with my new trainer, I almost, uh, you know, you get complacent. You forget that, you know, then that you have a 53-foot trailer behind you. Yeah. And I'm glad he was paying attention and knew what he was doing because I came into a corner and think, goodness, I was in a parking lot. But I was this close to getting my trailer and taking off in front of a, a truck. And he told me, he's like, turn to the right, turn to the right. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, of course, okay, so I turn to the right. And he's like, now look in your left mirror. And I looked in my left mirror and I see that I'm clearing the trailer. And I started thinking in my head, like, I, if he wasn't paying attention, you know, I was nervous. I was in a big truck stop and right. I didn't know what I was doing. It was my second day with him and he was on point because I would have taken the front end of that truck off. And, That's awesome. But other than that, no, I haven't hit anything. Nothing's hit me. <laughs> Besides a couple little birds and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's bad. <laughs> I feel sad when I dump them out sometimes. Dump them out? Thump them. Like, oh. When they... Ew. Yeah. It's not all, like, drastic and, like, glorified and bloody or anything, but... I hear so many horror stories about new drivers at other companies, they have so many accidents and their trainer is sleeping in the back and they didn't know what to do or they were backing up and their trainer was there and they just hit whatever. Is it? I'm sure that's really 
discouraging because you're supposed to be learning from these people and they can't even catch. Well, so I that mean, was really awesome that your trainer did. Yeah. Yeah, he knew it just by, he could even see my mirrors, he knew it just by the angle, you know. But those type of trainers, I mean, it, it comes in everywhere, you know, and in every, I guess, trucking company. But you can't be a trainer if you're not there for your, your trainee, you know, to help them learn. And I've heard that in other companies that, yeah, guys are sleeping in the back and yeah. like on their first week, second week, it's like, well, don't take the job because you're not here for the money. Right. You know, you're here to teach these these individuals that's never done this before. And yeah, you don't leave them out there on a limb and say, hey, go for it, figure it out. I don't know how they sleep with a new driver because I'll be freaking out. Not me. <laughs> it's hard. I'd rather drive my shift, let them drive their shift, and I'll sit right there in that seat. And yeah, yeah I'm, I'm dog tired. But at least I'm aware and I'm active to help them out of doing what they're doing. I sleep like a baby at night, I'll tell you that. But. So how's sharing the space with a stranger? <laughs> um, it's always a little difficult at first because you don't know who you're bunking up with, you know? Right. And I'm okay with it. I'm used to it. I'm more concerned and worried about what they're feeling and what they're thinking. So I try to make it as comfortable as I can for them. Um, but at first, you never know. You don't know if they're going to snore all night. You don't know if their feet stink. You know, you don't know any of these things. I mean, but uh, you find out usually, really quick. Yeah, you find out real <laughs> fast. I've been blessed. Luckily, I've been blessed with who I've had on my truck, and uh, I haven't had to worry about any of that. So. Uh, but you, you learn each other real quick. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're with each other all day for, usually I'll do about two weeks out, 13 to 14 days, come in, let them have their home time to see their family and do whatever they need. Um, and then we'll go out for the last, you know, 13, 14 days. Do you have kids? I do. I have four little girls. <gasps> oh, wow. Four little, 10 years old, seven years old, four years old, and coming up September 1st, a one-year-old. September, oh. Life. Do you video FaceTime them a lot when you're gone? Yes, I try to I try to video time uh, every night. Um, if not, definitely sending text messages for the night before uh, or for that night and the following day. Please make a right on 21st Street. <laughs> <laughs> Safely. In 0.3 miles, please make a right on East Walking Street.
and that tension release, it, it was so, so much fun. I recommend this to anybody out here. So what's your strategy going in for your second race? That you I, I want to kind of stay next to people driving. I felt like I was alone all the time by myself. I was gone. You couldn't keep up to me. <laughs> that was practicing. On that one. <laughs> she was practicing. She was good though. So now that I'm ready. All I know is I seen her coming around the corner when the guy put out the black and white flag. So I'm pretty sure that means Kim is the winner. Number one. Thank you. Just saying. <laughs> and things that you guys do? Uh, what do you mean? Like out on the road, I've seen some of them like put their flashers on. There's not really a lot of signals out here. Um, the flashers, yeah. the four ways are good for multiple things. Um, not only, you know, if, if you need to let someone behind you know that there's something going on ahead. Like for instance, being in a truck with a trailer, you have a truck and a trailer behind you, they can't really see what you can see. So when you're coming up, say, to traffic like this, so we're coming up doing 55, 60 miles an hour, and traffic's coming to a pretty pretty fast stop. Yeah. You put your four-ways on, everybody behind you, and this is not just for truckers, this is for you know four-wheelers as well. Yeah. They can see that when you got your cautions on, it's an emergency situation or, or somewhat or hazards. They're most likely, and I haven't had an issue yet, but they're gonna slow down and then, yeah, right? There's no wood in here. But, um, just kind of gives the people behind you a heads up. Yeah. So uh, that was always a good way to have the, the four ways for. Or like you saw earlier when we were driving down that really tight street because those trucks were parked off of the curb. Yeah. But I had a four wheeler coming at me. I'm obviously not going to try to jump in front of them because I know I'm going to lose. So I put my four ways on for the people behind me to know like, hey, I might be coming to a stop to let that pedestrian go by and then you know we can continue on here in a rush to do anything so cbs aren't utilized like they used to be anymore uh -huh. um, sometimes you can get on certain channels on the cb and you can listen to people and they're more of on there just to i guess kind of talk mess to each other so sometimes it gets pretty hilarious it's pretty funny but the only time i ever turn my cb on is when i am stuck in traffic and i can't basically see how far the traffic is so you could jump on the cb and um you know, always find your mile marker, where you're at, what direction you're going, and you know, what highway or interstate, et cetera, that you're on, and call ahead. You know, like anybody ahead of so-and-so where I'm at, like does anybody see anything? And you always get somebody on response that's gonna let you know. Like, yeah, you know, probably about 19 miles north of your direction, you know, there's a rollover or something, and they'll get back on there and a night driver, you know, the, the traffic's just clearing up. So you kind of get an estimated time of what you're doing, but. Does every truck have a CB? No. We never even have this conversation recruiting ever. Yeah, you, you, it, it's, you could buy it if you want, you know. I, I get them for certain reasons, like for two reasons, traffic, and sometimes when you're driving, you're, you're out in the middle of nowhere, you don't have, um, yeah, signal on your phone or on your Zonar or others use Qualcomm's as well. 10-4 means like, okay, like you've acknowledged it, it's good to go. Um, same as, you know, copy, copy that. Uh, there's all kinds, you know, if you could, you get other truckers that, you know, say I'm 10-5, that means they're in route. So if you do need help, you do talk to other truckers like, hey man, I got you, I'm right up the way, you know, I'm 10-5. Means are headed towards your location. Um, a smoky? <laughs> What's a smoky? Do your do speed limits when you pass a smoky. Um, <laughs> What's a smoky? That's funny you ask. Um, smokies are law enforcement. They're law enforcement set. You know the ones that are sitting out on the side of the road. Yeah. And they're watching you, watching other trucker speed. So usually you can get on your CBs and be like, hey, I'm on route. You know, 15 whatever, mile marker 174 headed south, you know, you got Smokies on the left, and that'll let other drivers know, which you're not supposed to be speeding, but pay attention because they're hiding behind a bush and they're gonna get you. So we try to help the other truckers out so they don't get tickets. Now, I don't like to listen to my CV, it annoys me. I really don't even like to listen to radio, so, you know, like the majority of the time. I like just listening, it sounds corny, but I like just listening to my truck, listening to the road. Thinking to myself. You don't get sleepy? No. Oh, if you get sleepy, you know, you can always shut down for an hour or two, take a nap, keep going. But you can you get used to it. I got a question for you. Tell me, Ashley. 
what is the most exciting thing about your job or what makes you feel good about your job? Knowing that you really help somebody and it helps them improve their life by getting a good job and getting that phone call after they're hired and they're happy and they call you back and thank you. Like, I've been sent flowers and candy and gifts and things and that's really nice, but just to know that I was that impactful and help people attain their goals and mm -hmm. just really see them perform well. Makes you feel good, feel good? Yeah. That's cool. Give me the tingles. Like, oh. ah. I know, isn't that sweet? It's true. <laughs> it's called dedication to our job, man.